Hey, the inner maiden. And so the maiden is the archetype that we arrive in from youth until monarchy. So until our first bleed. So it's the first archetype of a woman. And if we were to look at the directions, the season, um, and where it is that the moon is in the cycle of the maiden and when we're in the cycle of our maiden during our own inner moon cycle, the direction is the east, so it's the, the rising sun. Uh, the season is spring, the element is air. And we are in our inner, we're in our maiden with our moon cycle right after our bleed. So it's kind of like she's just slowly starting to creep out from underneath the covers as the crescent moon comes back and that's when la luna when the moon is in her maiden is uh, the, the slightest sliver of the new moon all the way up until just before the full moon so that's that's the maiden and when i think of the maiden i think of a young girl dancing in the field and so she is full of ideas and uh, vulnerability. She sees the magic in everything. She's just playful and excitable and really the visionary. And so that's where the dreams come from. It's like the element of air. They're coming into our thoughts. And then uh, we receive these visions, these dreams. That's the maiden. And then it's the mother, the, the next archetype that pushes them out. Um, and so when you think of your inner maiden or what she revealed to you, it's that dreamscape. It's the maiden dancing in the field full of love, full of life, full of magic and exuberance and excited and playful. There's such an element of play to the maiden and to our, our inner child, which is one, one and the same. And so how the shadow side of the maiden can show up is saying yes to everybody over um, wanting to be seen all the time, just see me, see me, see me, uh, over giving, doing everything for everybody else, um, naive, all these ideas this can show up as the shadow side is just all these ideas, all these ideas, but doesn't have the confidence of the mother to birth them and push them into life right and so as women we are creators both of babies and um just other babies like projects all that kind of stuff it's not actual physical babies but so we we are creators as a woman and it's the maiden that has the ideas and the shadow side can look like not the confidence to push them out to birth them out into fruition and the shadow side of the inner maiden can also show up with seeking validation from outside sources. And none of the shadow side of any aspect of any archetype of a woman is bad. It's it's necessary. We have the light, the dark, the good, the bad, the shadow, all that kind of stuff. It's just recognizing um, where the shadow lives within you as well as where does the, the balanced maiden live within you as well. But when you notice that shadow side where it might be like wanting to please everybody, giving to everybody else, just like see me, see me, see me, validate me, validate me, validate me, we will never receive that validation from external sources. What the inner maiden needs is the validation from you. And so part of, part of the work, and this is really deep work, is to mother that inner maiden so that she feels safe to come out and to be seen. Um, and so if that shadow side is coming up in you, that see me, see me, see me, see me, validate me, validate me, validate me, that's an invitation to look at, okay, how can I see myself? How can I nourish my inner maiden? How can I mother her um, and give her what she required, but maybe didn't receive? And maybe she did receive it, but she just needs um, more of it. And she needs it from you, nobody else. So that, um, that validation wants to come from within. And so with the maiden, I'll just touch on this, with the altar space and what that might looks, look like to 
uh, evoke your inner maiden and also bring her with you, right? And and um, so what the altar items might look like is a picture of your inner child. It's like a reminder, like you're with me, you're with me. I, you don't need to be left behind. I'm not abandoning you if there's any um, abandonment wounds from the time of the inner maiden, any of that kind of stuff. So a child or a picture of your your child self is beautiful. Anything that represents air, so it might be feathers, uh, the season of spring, anything that represents the season of spring for you, play. So there might be like a picture or um, I don't know why, but like a Play-Doh figurine is coming to mind. There might be a fairy. Uh, a fairy can very much have a, a maiden-like energy, but it can also have the wild woman, the enchantress energy. So we'll we'll look at that as well. But kind of the the winged ones, the air beings, that childlike playfulness is the inner maiden, and a lot of um, the work that I do with clients is healing that inner maiden and allowing her to feel safe to be seen and to come out from underneath the covers and and why that work is so 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 important and is kind of a something that we've all experienced is this uh, abandonment of our inner maiden is oftentimes we didn't get to express our inner maiden fully she got shushed she got to she got told to dim to fit in to turn down her light if she was loud to just um be like everybody else and that's really where that patriarchal conditioning comes in because it's like why can't you be like everybody else why are you so loud don't cry shush 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 um and that's uh where the inner maiden gets severed and we might have never given her the opportunity to stand in her fullness and so i'll use an example for myself, my inner maiden very much experienced, it's not safe, you're not safe, you're not safe, it's not safe to be seen, okay? And so whether it was from, you know, I don't like to use big trauma, small trauma, but that's that's a word that I'll, words that I'll use, but all trauma is received quite similar um, or can be received quite similar. And so if there was you know, an experience in your childhood that made it not safe for you to be seen, you might be carrying that in your inner maiden might retreat, retreat, retreat. And then she wants to be coaxed out from underneath the covers. Um, and so th those past experiences might have caused her to feel unsafe to be seen to, you know, there's, there's so many different variations of how the inner maiden might have been um, shushed, um, shackled, silenced, um, you know, that, that tie to her might have been severed. And so with bringing her back out to be fully seen, if that is something that's coming up with your, your shadow side is to start to create an inner dialogue, a uh, relationship with her where it's, we can be seen, we can, you know, it's okay for us to stand in our light gently coaxing her out from underneath the covers if those shadow sides of um, see me, see me, see me are coming up, um, validation, all that kind of stuff. She she essentially needs to receive that from you, nobody else. And that healing of the inner maiden allows those dreams and that playfulness to start to come back where it the joy and the silliness and just, you know, there might be that I'm being loud and playful and like see me and like hear me roar. Um, that childlike inner maiden energy coming from a very nourished space as opposed to I need you to validate me. I need you to do this for me. Um, and so with the moon, the the maiden archetype is the crescent all the way up and and both with the moon and with our own inner cycle with our archetype because we go through the maiden archetype each month as we go through all four of them there's a lot of energy and movement that's coming in so the air is uh, a yang element with um with the moon and, and our own inner cycle 
And so it's more of the doing with the maiden. There's lots of energy there, excitement, um, play. The sky really is the limit. And, and so for yourself, if you're noticing that like dreamscape isn't happening or that like, oh, I believe in myself and just the sky's the limit and all these ideas are coming, you know, all that kind of like expansion, the inner maiden is so expansive. The question to ask yourself is just like, how can I nourish my inner maiden? How can I make her feel safe to come into that dreamscape? Again, and so that is the inner maiden. I would love for you to post a picture of how your inner maiden feels. What does she embody? Um, any, yeah, the energy that she evokes within you as you, you journeyed with her and any questions that are coming up for you around the inner maiden, just posting them in the group or emailing me back um, and just, really allowing her to show herself to you, allowing her to be seen. And so, yes.